Okay, so we are actually live, which means that Rick has stopped making the faces. That is awesome. <laughs> anyway, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the SOE Community Webcast. This week, we have our spotlight on the Player Studio. I'm Linda Carlson, known as Brass the Dwarf, the Director of Community here. Joining me today are one familiar face, one new face. The familiar face on the far side, I know that a lot of you guys are familiar with Joe Shukat, our Director of Artistic Development here at SOE. And the new guy, which far fewer people ladies will know, gentlemen. oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, is Rick Reynolds, who is our new senior manager for e-commerce. Thank you. Yes. So Very happy to be here. I'm so stoked to have you both here because we're about to talk about the latest, greatest, bestest innovation that SOE has brought in for ages, this, the Player Studio. So uh, there are three games participating at launch of Player Studio and a fourth joining in. And the games are? EverQuest, mm -hmm. EverQuest 2, uh, Free Realms, and joining in is Vanguard Saga of Heroes. Really? Yes. Okay, that's really cool. I bet the players of Vanguard are going to be really thrilled to be able to create some more items. They are. And uh, so at what stage are the game teams at now? Uh, if you, you can see for yourself by going to the websites. If you go to everquest.com or everquest2.com, there's a section for Player Studio at the top right-hand side of the navigation bar at the top. Or you can go to soe.com and see a section. If you go to www.soe.com slash player dash studio, you'll come to a page that covers uh, all four of those games. You'll see, uh, it, if you go to it today, it looks like uh, Vanguard and Free Realms both say coming soon. Mm -hmm. But uh, Free Realms is very, very soon. You and know, then Vanguard needs a couple more weeks and may maybe a month. As you know, we've outlawed the term soon here. It's usually followed by a TM and uh, so soon, huh? Does that mean you have a ballpark sort of launch? Well, it means here? all the web pages are built and are just being tested right now, and ah. then, then they'll get rolled out. It's supposed to be next week. Really? Dude, yes. This is yes. awesome. Okay, so let's, let's delve a little bit further here. Where did the idea come from? I know that I first heard rumors about Player Studio, I don't know, months and months ago. So where did the process start? Where did we decide that we can actually allow the players to come in and have that sort of collaborative input into our games? Well, I think this is something we've been looking at doing for a long time. I mean, we have one of the best gaming communities out there. Uh, and, no kidding. Uh, yeah. Everybody is really engaged and you know, we thought, what a great opportunity to let people flex their artistic skills. We've seen great art on the forums, mm -hmm. on the boards, and at uh, Fanfare, now called SOE Live. Mm -hmm. uh, let's give the players an opportunity to, to actually contribute mm -hmm. to, the, to the games and the, the worlds that they love. It's, I always have this sort of vision, and if I had time to go back and do comics, I'd just make one of, you know, the, the art team sitting around going, what? You want this in another color? You want different pictures yeah. on it? Here! You do it! And that's exactly what yeah. we're doing now, but they have an opportunity to make a small profit as well. So how did we come up with that profit sharing arrangement? Doesn't that make people really nervous over on the e-commerce <laughs> side of things? Letting other people have money? It was, it Explain was, why this is good for both there sides. Was some very, uh, there were very fun conversations a couple times with, with the executives and John Smedley in the room and, and uh, like going said, back and John forth. Smedley. No, really, and uh, going back and forth, how, how much can we give them and, and still make this work? And, you know, and oh, it was great. It was absolutely great. As uh, I recall, John kept pushing to give them more and more as compared to other I companies. Know, he, John would give away the whole company if we weren't really <laughs> careful with them. But, um, the, you know, the rest of us, you know. Yeah, business heads have to prevail. I, I still do think that the percentage is pretty good, though. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well... How did you arrive at, at the cost and benefit ratio? Okay, yeah, well, well that's a good point. Um, we, we really don't think that the main motivation people have for participating is the money. We think it's actually the excitement of seeing their creative work and their cool ideas in the, in the game around them, in the world with them. Absolutely. Getting to, I have to Getting agree. to build these things and then seeing them. The first time you see one of your objects in a game, it is, it's like a drug. It feels great. Uh, it, it is a mini high of its own. And these... Hello, fun police. Drug reference. Not <laughs> real. I did, uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> it's like a good thing. We'll just go with a good yes. thing. You'll like it. 
But the, uh, uh, for those of you who do need to be able to justify to your uh, wife, husband, significant other, all the extra time you're putting in on this, the uh, compensation may help with that discussion. And so we're, sh we're basically sharing as closely as we can with the player creator uh, the, the revenue that comes in. First, one has to pay all the different parts that uh, one has to pay. If you owe a percentage to this company and a percentage to the distributor and there, there's this kind of uh, tax or, or VAT or something taken out, we have to do all that part first so before we get... real world economics then. I mean, they, yes. they actually, they will participate in the profits at the same time as covering all the same expenses that we have yes. to before we cash our paycheck. Yes. Gotcha. And then when you take what's left, um, even though the player has to do a lot of work to create an item and has to bring a lot of inspiration to the table, uh, the, the game development team still has to work with that art ad, uh, at additional levels to get it finished and ready and into the game and tested. Mm -hmm. And then we have some maintenance costs associated with running the server and pulling the reports to run the checks to pay the people. So we figure we're doing a little bit more work than the player, so splitting it 60-40 is as fair as we could do it. How does that compare to other companies who are doing the same sort of thing? Oh, I, I imagine... Um, we're allowed to say that, aren't we? I imagine yeah, Valve was disappointed to hear our, our percentage when we made it so public. So you're saying that we're actually paying more than yeah, Valve is? We are paying more than uh, Valve is with... Um, I'm going to quit my day shot. job and start designing say the that. stuff I tell you. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, well can I tell fine. you a little bit about what we've done on the development side to, to, to prep for this uh, because I was really uh, player surprised studio? Because these, these are big games and, uh, you know, EverQuest is, well, let's face it, it's an older game. It's been around for 13 years. Yeah. How do you amend the architecture to allow stuff from the outside to become part of that game? Well, I think this is going to be an ongoing, ongoing initiative for us. We're obviously starting with a few... Um, items from each game, okay. but I definitely see that expanding as people start mm -hmm. contributing and and we start getting great great things. We'll start to look at at uh, uh, other areas, other items, other categories we can add. Mm -hmm. For right now, if you go to the website that Rick mentioned, you'll see that uh, for EverQuest, we're doing housing items, mm -hmm. uh, weapons and shields, I believe. Um, EQ2, we're doing cloaks and uh, housing items. Uh, we have not uh, settled on the items for free realms, but they, they, will be, they will be similar. And we're trying to provide a range of artistic expression for the users. For example, on EverQuest 2, uh, for cloaks, you uh, can create a texture map to put on the cloak. So we'll wow. provide the mesh for you if you don't have any 3D experience. And you can do mm -hmm. that cool emblem or a piece of art to put on the back of that cloak. Uh, uh, same thing with, uh, w I know we have something coming up in Free Realms that'll be texture map oriented, but we also have the full 3D work that we support. Uh, and uh, we also link on the website uh, a number of places you can go to get 3D programs. Uh, some Tutorials as well, maybe? And, and we also link to some uh, popular websites uh, and communities where you can go that also build these nice. type of assets for games. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very basic style guide up there now that I, I think will be uh, expanding as time goes by. But uh, we're really excited to see what the player community comes up with. Uh, yeah. You know, you've you acquired things for your house. Now you get to create actual any kind of crazy item you want well, to put in your home or on your plot. Or We've already seen a few samples starting to yeah. come in and they're getting more and more impressive all the time. I have to say that from my point of view in EQ2, guild cloaks are going to become amazing. Yeah. I mm -hmm. could just see that happening. I can just, oh, I can hardly wait to redo the inmate's cloak. And, oh, wait, am I allowed to submit things as an employee? Or, no. Oh, Employees oh, and their families okay. aren't. Quit oh, you now. can't say that. No, I can't. <laughs> this is the best job I've ever had. Okay, somebody else in the guild will have to make an awesome inmate's cloak. I'm looking at you, Jen. All right, so um, can you give us a bit of a walkthrough about what happens? So, I want to make a guild cloak. Well, not me, somebody else in my guild. What do I do? 
What's, what's well, the process? First, you're going to go to the website, and you're going to download. Uh, for each type of item, we are providing uh, a file for you to download that shows exactly the type of submission we, we want. And the rules and uh, guidelines are published there as well. So for the cloak, for example, you will download the OBJ file into your 3D program, mm -hmm. and you'll start from there. Uh, Rick, you want to yeah. talk about what happens once you've completed your item? You, uh, we'll, we'll jump ahead in time, because it's going to take you <laughs> some time to, to work Meanwhile. through building your, your item. But when you think you're ready, you'll go back to the, you'll go back to the Player Studio site, uh, and there'll be a section, How to Submit. And you'll, you'll go there. Do you need a law degree to understand the how to submit thing? Pretty much. Oh. Just kidding. You'll, you'll want to log. <laughs> we'll give out his cell phone number at the yes, end of this. The, it's no, it, yeah, probably have it already if you look. <laughs> uh, log into your station account, and it will step you through what to do. Um, there will be some example files there that are packages that look just like an upload of a finished item. So you're going to find the one for your game, for your kind of item that most closely resembles it, download that package and look at what parts went into it. One of the parts is a, is a form. You'll need to fill out the form, save it, uh, and then put that document back into the package. When you've collected all the right things into the right folder, you want to zip it up and it'll have buttons to, for uploading it into the system and submitting it. Now once once we receive the file, there's still a long journey your item has to go on uh, as it makes its way through the mm. system. So, okay, so what happens? Well, the, it's going to get routed to the right games dev, dev team, okay. and the artists will look at it, and the game designers will look at it, and they'll talk about it, and they'll look at different ones and say, you know, is it, is, does it match our style? Is mm -hmm. it too many or too few polygons? Is it... Um, it, is it too similar to something else we've got? Or, or would it be perfect for the Halloween promo so maybe we should, you know, time it to go up with that? Or, there are lots of different elements that could be described. Does it, should this be something we put on NPC guards some, in that new area over there? I mean, they could do a variety of things with it in addition to just putting it in the store we'll, we'll, for players. All how, our, how our does teams, this feedback get back to the player, Well, though? we're going to be regularly, each team is going to regularly look at these submissions, and we're going to look at, uh, you submit a screenshot uh, along with your uh, artwork, and we're going to look at each and every submission and go over them carefully, and uh, we're just excited to see some of the cool yeah. stuff that, w that we can add to the uh, Okay, to so the what store. happens if somebody uploads, oh, this never happens, an inappropriate image? Uh, I don't think we accept inappropriate okay. images. But how do you send back <laughs> the feedback? You know, whether it's an inappropriate image or it's got too many polygons or uh, say the style isn't necessarily in keeping with the game. Well, how does how does the submitter get feedback? From well, you? on the on the technical front, we uh, well we have the list of of the technical parameters, and when you complete your item, double check that list. But there will be a filter. If we say do not make a housing item exceeding 2,000 polygons gotcha. and you submit an OBJ file that's 2,002 polygons, you will get feedback that this, the submission failed, you know, too many polygons. For the following reasons. So um, obviously going over, double checking those rules, you'll be, you'll be fine on submitting anything. So, uh, uh, and we've made those as, as simple and inclusive as, as, as possible. And it, it, in fact, each object, uh, we're not doing overly complex texture maps, so I think this is really set up uh, for people new to 3D to be able to successfully uh, create some assets. But as far as the, the content-related things, uh, Rick, you could probably address that uh, best. The, uh, one we'll punt that over to you. No, that's yes. fine. You. As, it, as it comes in, <laughs> They have to take your art and make it into an in-game object. They have to assign a variety of parameters to it. Uh, uh, they need to uh, put it into the game database itself, put it into a build. They have to test it. They have to then put it into the marketplace. They've got to you know, make sure the name is right, the, uh, the uh, price is right, the description's there. 
There's a credit for the creator. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. Oh, sure. You get credit for putting this in. You're not going to be the only one who knows I made that cloak. No, 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 no. As you go through the store, one of the things you'll notice is that anything made by a player is now going to have a new thing on it. And that new thing is going to say who the creator is. And oh. so one of the things on the submission form that you're asked to fill out uh, is how do you want your creativity to be credited? You know, what, what name do you want to give? I love it. It doesn't have to be your character name. It could be, it could be a different name. It should not be your RL name. That would be, <laughs> uh, that would not be smart. But... Pick, it, pick your name. Some really cool designer name. We're going to have to enforce uh, uniqueness on the names. Okay. Because we don't that want, because this is across platforms, and we don't, what we don't want is Gucci, someone Gucci coming 01, in. Gucci 01, Gucci 02. No, but right? we don't want someone coming in, making some really great stuff, putting it up, yep. and then someone else coming in and trying to fake being you. Uh -huh. You know, because that's not, that's not cool. Not at all. So we're, we're gonna, you're going to have to put a name, and then that name will show up next to the, in the description of the item in the store. That's great. Not only that, this is pretty cool. When your object gets into the game, we're going to give you a complimentary copy of your object on the character nice. and server that you designate in your submission form. Hmm. So you're going to get a copy of it uh, for free. Uh, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. Don't lose it. And then it goes live on the marketplace. So from the time that you submit, assuming that nothing goes wrong and it's accepted as is, do we even have a general time frame for the pipeline Months. or are we just about it's to? Gonna, it takes a long time. There are a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. There are art refinement steps. There are game design steps. There are testing steps. There are, there are steps regarded to putting it in the right branch of the software code and when that branch gets deployed according to software development schedules. Because your, your object is not going to be the only thing that goes into the game on that day. It will be included in a content patch or in a, in a, um, uh, an, a game update of some sort. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, good. and obviously if you choose to make something you know, seasonal oriented, like, right. hey, I'm, I'm playing the, uh, the Halloween content, I will make a cool Halloween thing. By the time you submit make that, May, you su submit it in, yeah. yeah. We're not going to release that in May. But, uh, uh, but so don't, don't feel wait like you, but also don't feel restricted that, you know, because we will get it, we will get to it and look at it. Oh, and yeah. uh, we're always looking for, for the cool seasonal oh, items yeah, too. Absolutely. And if you want to make a seasonal item, do leave a little time, not the week before yeah. the, mm -hmm. the content yeah. launches for the, the seasonal update. Okay. Is there anything else you want to address in a general sense before we get to the player questions? Because we have a number to get through here. Well, if, you're, if you are really, really adventurous and creative, you want to you wanna go for the furniture items because they can be small, huge, complex. Uh, they can take up a lot of space. They could have, all, you could go all the way around them and experience different elements of it. And Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that. Uh, the, when you go to the website uh, for housing items, you'll show that I think we have an image of a bed there and, and something else. Still. But it doesn't need to be an actual piece of furniture. Anything to put on a player lot or in a player house. It could be a crazy in-game fountain or a piece of artwork or a sculpture. Uh, anything, anything you want to make. We've already seen the types of things that people build with existing structures and components in all of these games. So I think that's going to be truly outstanding. Yeah, I, I think the Im important thing, it kind of addresses something you brought up uh, earlier, Linda, is um, we do want to ensure that it's your own work that you're, yeah. you're ah. showing because you don't want to find that KISS album cover and say that's going to make an awesome cloak. No. Because it has to be your that work. That belongs to, that's an IP that belongs to somebody else. Yeah. So Jean you will, would not it, be happy if we were having that Nor sold. would the artist who made the album cover. <laughs> so part of the submission process is you, you'll be letting us know that you're responsible for the creation of the item right. and you haven't taken it from, from somewhere else because we do want to respect uh, other people's creations. Yeah, and, definitely. So and if you're, if you're not as adventurous and excited as that for your first item, don't go with the furniture. Instead, go with the cloak or the cape. Right. Uh, th that, that one, you're not 
changing the shape. You're just layering imagery and colors and, and texture on the outside of it. Or maybe, uh, you know, just putting an emblem on the shield might, might be good for you in EverQuest. Or there's, there's something, actually there are a couple of things coming for free roams, and I'm not gonna leak them early, but there are a couple items okay. coming for free roams that are likewise very easy. You just have to put, uh, you just have to put an image and a look on the front of it, and you don't have to worry too much about the, the shape of the piece or, or the uh, underneath parts. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, actually a question that Amy just brought up from the uh, chat online. Do you have to have a sub subscription to submit? Uh, well, we membership? don't have subscriptions no, anymore. We don't. No, so we don't. Yeah, if you uh, have a station ID, you have, you have, have a station ID, ID but yes. you can still be a free player and submit. All you, you have to have a station ID so that we know who you are. Uh, besides, you want your free item, right? But uh, you do not have to be a gold member or anything like that. So it's about as free for all as you can get. Yeah. So it's already 421, but we're going to run just a little over. Okay. I know, I know it goes how? really fast. Wow. That's how it happens. Okay. So some hard questions for you. Oh, this, one, this one's definitely 11. for Joe. All right. What about use of transparency maps and animated textures and the format for the latter? Uh, right now we are not supporting transparency maps or animated textures. Doesn't mean we won't in the future, but uh, we're going to stay fairly simple with, with how these maps are addressed early on. Um, so no, no transparency maps, no, no um, animated textures at the moment. Okay. Uh, on a related note, particle effects, lights, etc. If we create candles and torches, what would we need to do to produce the same results seen in other like items in the game? For example, candle and torch flame animation. Also, the lighting source that is a result of the flame and perhaps mm. smoke emanating from objects. Well, this is getting complicated. Well, that's a really good. That's a really good question because all our effects are done with in-game proprietary tools. Uh, we're not going to ask you to imitate that in a 3D program. We would have to recreate that anyway. But when you submit your item, you will have an opportunity in the description of the item to, uh, or another, another field, I'm not right, sure what right the Right next to the description, like. there's a comment field. You can detail that out. Like, I've made this brazier, and I think it would be great if the coals glowed and if there was a smoke effect. Or wow. I made yeah. this this uh, shield and uh, the um, iconography on it, it would be nice if it uh, had a glow effect. So it, we can't promise we could do all the things, but we definitely want to hear your suggestions uh, if it's effects related to like take it over the top and, and so that's all your vision. part of the polish process then. That would be okay. something. Yes, exactly. We add. so we but we want to hear from you what. What in, in it a few, needs. On a few sites, uh, not our sites, but other sites, I was going through, uh, can't remember, I think probably EQ2 Wire, but people were saying, is this going to put the artists of SOE out of business? It sounds like, no, they're going to be busier than ever. Yes, we'll be very busy. <laughs> uh, the, the I love th it. The thing is, we're, uh, the OBJ file is uh, a very uh, uh, program agnostic format. Uh, we still have to take that item, do whatever tweaks we need to do so it's going to be run most efficiently in our, in our engine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, we, I don't think we'll, we'll be putting any of the, uh, the my artists fr My or. friends around the, among the artists don't, don't seem very scared by this. They're actually really curious to see what people are making. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so here's another, oh, more technical stuff. Okay. Yay, Joe. Do MTO files need to be generated and submitted? And if so, is there a defined default for the specularity, diffuse ambience, etc., colors for objects, or are the typical standard defaults used? You're going to scare them. MTL I know, it's files. getting into Greek here. For example, the standard default for ambience would be KA 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Well, then, How would you respond to that, sir? Because I, I have no idea what any of that just meant. This sounds... Uh, uh, it, well, it's interesting. It's obvious for, from someone who's familiar with, with, with 3D and 3D programs, but the, uh, the, the MTL basically describes the quality of the, the shader you're applying to your object. Uh, you don't have to worry about you know, submitting or stripping out that information. You don't, you don't have to submit that. We're, we have our own shaders in-game as well, so you know, that's part of our reconstruction ah, okay. of the asset. Yeah, don't put the MTL file in your upload submission. Right. It's that. We're only asking for, for those the we don't want that. For those who actually know what an MTL file is. Luckily, I would never do that because I have no MTL. 
Uh, it sounds like some sort of a BLT variation. <laughs> okay, another technical one. Okay. Are the vertex normals required in the OBJ? The object file? Well, some rendering engines use them and some don't, so I usually strip them out for the ones that don't use them. I did notice that the vertex normals are present in distillery object file. It never hurts to leave them in the file, but about a quarter of the overall file size is the vertex normals. Okay. Again, th this is a, a question for someone who's fairly well versed in 3D too. So what he's talking about is should he stri strip out this vertex data to make his file size smaller? Uh, not necessary. And the, the vertex data... Um, you can define the, the hardness and softness of edges, so you don't want to strip that information out. We actually want that information uh, in your file. Okay. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, will SOE be providing any software tools, meshes, etc., for those of us that are less artistically inclined, but who would like to try and give it a whirl? And that's Silena, one of our longtime forum supporters. Uh, we have a link up on the uh, under the one of the FAQ sections. I don't recall right off the top of my head which one, but uh, we've listed a, a number of 3D programs, a number of 2D programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them are, are completely free, some of them are, are trial version. So we don't want to restrict you in what kind of program you, you're using. And the formats for textures, TGA, and 3D, OBJ are fairly generic formats. So uh, we use Maya. We're not requiring you to purchase Maya to create anything. You could uh, download a program like Blender that's uh, completely open source and free mm. and, and create a a 3D object in that software. And the, the great thing is that there are tons of tutorials all over the internet. We also list uh, a number of 3D sites and 3D communities that you can ask for advice in, you, you know, that uh, deal with people who are just beginning to, uh, to work in 3D. So right. there, there's no end of resources like if you want some simple 3D 2D uh, tutorials for one of the programs there's there's plenty of information out there to to get you started, so, so we just give you a little a little head start on it. This is kind of nice. Will we be able to make weapons and or armor? Asks Rainmare. Now weapons and armor are much more complex, and we know that you can already make shields and stuff for EQ. How long after the initial launch do you plan to inst uh, introduce more models? Uh, well, I don't know right who now, to ask that one from. Right now, we have weapons available for for EQ. EQ. Mm -hmm. Weapons for EQ two uh, require a, a bone inside the weapon, so that's something we're looking at. But we haven't announced uh, when or if we're going to make that available. Armor is a, a trickier concept because it would have to be fitted to multiple player character uh, models. So we're still looking at all these things. We haven't taken anything off the table. Uh, but uh, so we'll see. I mean, the more people do fantastic stuff, the the more the more likely more you are likely to push that. Yeah. we're gonna go and and do the background work to make some of these other categories available. But it, it's worth sometimes l understanding the the orders of difficulty involved. If you're making, let's say you're making a weapon in EQ2 or Vanguard or something, and it's got a, we could put one up there that has a bone in it and let you redo it. Um, but you have to be careful as you make it that the bone stays where it needs to so that it will look good in every kind of animation with every size of character that might have it and, and doesn't break any of that or, or uh, intersect incorrectly and visually look mm -hmm. off. Yeah. And that, but that's just something that's perhaps being held in the hand and moved around. If you look at the armor for a second, much more. It has to Magnitude cover all the right parts and not cover any of the wrong parts on and not leave any every parts different out. race and several, sometimes several body types for each race and both genders. And, you know, some, there's a lot of complication on that. And there's a lot of even just, even if all you wanted to do is take a perfect piece of armor that came in and test it on every character, you know, that's going to take time. You know, right now there are people sitting there watching this going, throw it at me, man. I can do this. <laughs> so I, I can hardly wait to see what starts coming in. One more question before we wrap up. Uh, how soon will international players be able to submit items for consideration? That's from Mrs. That's a good question. It's a great question. We, we obviously want all of our players to have access to this. 
the only thing limiting us is is uh, government laws. Oh. So uh, we're we're already set up to do certain things in the United States because uh, some of the processes and rules and paperwork we have in place to hire outside vendors mm -hmm. can be adapted to work also for uh, revenue share with players in this program. We don't have that all set up in every country. So we have to basically go country by country, look at for what... For every single country. Yeah. Look at the rules around sharing revenue to them. Is it is it uh, eligible for income tax? Is there another kind of tax? Do we have to register a certain way? Are there age limitations? Are there... What, do we, what paperwork is involved? So ridiculously we complicated. We have to figure out way. each one. Then we have to come up with a plan for how that would work. Then we have to go to our international attorneys, not our normal attorneys. And they have to go through a process and come back. And we have to, if we have distribution partners in those countries, like Europe or Russia, or wherever, we have to discuss it with them and make sure everyone's, everyone's happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's going to take a while. A while. And, and That's what, not even what, soon. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up rolling out a few countries at a time as we do them because it's so much work. It doesn't make a lot of sense to hold a lot of other countries till we get all of them. Right, no. right, right. Okay, so obviously we've gone way over time here because you and you thought you'd have. Oh. We were just talking before this started about the fact that they, they have a whole hour to fill at the panel that we're having first thing on Friday morning. Now, believe me, um. this is SWE Live, so first thing is 10 a.m. We're not talking 7 a.m. here. Nobody's out of bed at 7 a.m. But at 10 a.m. on Friday at SOE Live, we're going to have a panel in the biggest available panel room, and hopefully we'll have that live cast. Can't guarantee it, but we really hope to, so you can get all the information. We're going to have some samples that are created from uh, our friends at the San Diego Art Institute. We're going to have actually they're not created by. Oh, the they're Art not. Institute, no. Oh, okay. Individual folks. Oh, individual yeah. folks who may or yeah. may not go to that college. Yeah. Okay, and we also have some uh, directly from the player community. We've yep. uh, I've been in contact with a few of them. We've got some samples in which, yep. for legal reasons, we're not yet allowed to show them to you, which I drives know. me crazy because they're really awesome. So you're going to have to come to SOE Live to see them. Uh, after that, if again, if we can have this live streamed, you'll be able to see them uh, from home as well. Please join us at SOE, SOE Live for that. Bring more questions for these guys. Yeah, we're going to have some artists there mm -hmm. kind of taking you through how to create some of these during items the panel, too. As it's during going. the panel okay. and I think maybe at, immediately maybe, afterwards uh, for, afterwards as well. Yeah. You'll get to do some hands on. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have yeah. a row of computers set up in the battlegrounds area, I believe, and some artists on hand to help you walk through them and we'll set up the times. I know that we have one bank of times on Friday immediately after the panel and there's yep. some rumors that we may get requests for more. Oh wow. So, uh, yeah, if you, and you if you're devs who have volunteered to help just understand you're going to yes. be on call a lot. Nice. I'll bring the beer. Oh, yeah. nice. And what were you saying about if you're too at 10 shy? in the morning. <laughs> if, you're, if you're too shy to ask a, a question in front of the big panel, and, uh, you can take him one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the artists. And, you know, if you, if you play EQ or Vanguard or EQ2 or Free Realms, you could find your artist mm -hmm. and, and sit down and ask him some questions in, in person. They're very uh, approachable, especially if you're talking about art. It's our favorite subject. No kidding. Well, thank you very much, Joe and Rick, oh, for joining um, me today uh, to talk about my, my favorite topic le lately, the I'm player studio. I'm looking forward studio. to SOE Live. I, oh, me oh, too. I, too. Me I really too. am. You guys got your costumes ready? I, uh, no, I'm still working on mine. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, yes, panel, 10 a.m., Friday, SOE Live. Meet us there. Thanks all for joining us, and we're probably going to skip Thanks. doing a webcast next week because we're going to all be at GDC Online and or getting ready for the panic of SOE Live. So yes. we'll see you there. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. Sony.